Hello everyone, this is Mistress Nightmare here. Anyway, let's continue reading My Possession, Chapter 4. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the story. May's point of view. I was just beginning to do my work on my science project when somebody knocked on the door. Glancing out in the darkness sky, thunder booming in the distance, I wonder who was sane enough to even knock up right now. Even my mom said that she, not to expect her home tonight. My mom had a fear of storms, so I, so a camp out in a, at a restaurant she worked at. All was planned out by her friend who worked there as well. Getting up slowly, I tiptoed to the front door, peeking through the eyepiece. A, so, a, a soft gas escaped my lips. I saw a man wearing a white hoodie place something on the doorstep. Just barely showing enough that his hoodie, hoodie was white, his hair was black. Fear ran up my spine, but the urge to knowing him was more, more powering. I unlocked the door with speed and threw it open. He was gone. The tapping of feeling of we was hearing away from the alley right to my to my right, but then I heard a began to hound. I mainly cursed and locked and looked down at the porch. A black box was there, larger than in one length, tied with a crimson ribbon like the flowers. It wasn't perfectly but any mentions, but again, the gesture was sweet. I picked up the box and shaked it, or held it close to my chest as I tried to see if he was lingering by to see my response to the gift. He laughed. I sighed softly and looked over to my neighbor's tree, and sp spurning, I did, did I see? Nah. It was probably the light of lightning playing tricks on me. Inside, I unwrapped the box, and taking the sweet feeling, the smooth silk of the ribbon, of the fuzzy violin in the box, opening it, I gasped inside. Inside the box was a brand new, expensive-looking knife. The metal glints in the light, and the edge was sharp, even to cut through anything. I tapped it, and the hilt was beautiful, mixed with light and dark colored wood. In an elegant, elegant, elegant shit handle, an engraved print of my name was freely drawn on the end of the side of it. I don't know much about knives, but this couldn't be used for simple kitchen duties, I'm sure. Feeling surprised warm from relieving such a gift, even though it was an immediately dangerous one, I opened the window facing my neighbor's yard. He ran off in the dis in that distance. Maybe he's still there. Maybe he lives nearby. Thank you for the gift. I called into the pounding darkness, a feeling that he could hear me. I leaned out the dark with a smile, closing the window and p picking up my gift, heading upstairs to my room. I put it somewhere safe and reach in reach. If it was meant for defend defend like me, it was nothing it was going it was. When I was going to use it. But I don't know how don't know the why green psychotic killer in my neighbor's tree completely. I'm I'm in the plan who was working in calm. I couldn't be long now. Just one of you. I were, the rain was murmuring and singing at the same time the saints been waiting for this night. Honestly, I couldn't find it, find the inner demon to hate rain. But that was sm smoking my clothes, chilling my skin. The best murder was done in a rainy night. And sitting in the front of the warm fire. Remembering my job, I stood up and gave a glance to May. She was back in the couch, bending her over her head like a halo. Her eyes looked tired, but she watched TV anyway, wrapping a, up a, a warm blanket. I grinned knowing that her mother wouldn't be home tonight. Getting close to her again, if I 
hurried, suddenly experiencing pounding the loud learning of my plan I made out. I may carefully made my way out of the tree into the sidewalk. The smile duck suddenly came out of the shadows, his tail wagging and his grin even in place grinning in response. I patted his head. Good timing, my furry friend. We have some bullies to take care of. I nearly seen the last part. Smiles the smiles widen and his eyes gleaming never seen an exciting look. Let's go. That much of the time that night, after all, I started to run my laughter, which was making an echo to hold back, bursting forward. It echoed up in the building, seemed to be laughing into the sky itself. Tonight would be a good night. I was concerned about it. Walking to May's house after my job, she left the door unlocked. For someone's strange reason, I was pleased to see I, w I was right on the money of my plan. May had completely passed out of the couch, head twisted towards me, lips placed just slightly. The feeling running gross in wet clothes. I s stripped off my hoodie, socks, shoes, pants. My black shirt and boxers with a fine drip, but couldn't leave them. With that, I carefully made it to the fireplace, setting my clothes on the stones in front of it to, to dry. I sat there while feeling the heat rushed on my skin. It was only time. I rather missed my eyelids since I needed to close my eyes for a minute. Just the feeling, the heat, hearing May's breath was something I wanted to do. Once my clothes were warm and most likely dry, I, the ones I wore anyway, I stood up silently and to my sleeping knife. She sighed softly in her sleep and shifted a little, smiled, tugged, tugged on her lip. I was concerned that she was dreaming, but I wanted to take her upstairs into her room. However, it was one part I hadn't planned properly. Wrong move she could wake up. I didn't want to leave her down here. I was hurt. I didn't want to read the thing a little. What what would I do? Something would happen if she wakes up and see me in my boxers and t shirt. I'm telling you that's not how I want our first meet to go. Taking the risk by the horn, I carefully wiggled my arms under her body, managed to lift her up, and with what's called bridal style, my knife was actually lighter, a light thing, but better than a dead weight. I drifted with one daily basics, her brows formed, slightly squirming in my arms a little, I froze, watching her eyes flutter open a little, completely blanked, as I spread a little detail in her eyes. As the rose met up to my own black ones, it was the most likely terrifying moment of my life. Instantly, I stood trying to, com to comfort me, resting her head on my chest, and went back to sleep. I couldn't move, thinking the feeling of nothing left in three minutes afterwards. Finally, I realized she wasn't thinking this was a dream, most likely not bothering with it. I sighed and built up. The strength I had somehow made it in the moment. I woke up. I walked my way up to with my knife in my arm. Once I she was tucked in bed, I quickly went downstairs for a bit. I dug around for any good food I ate and what I could find dog treats and offered them raw meat to smile. Who was clinging up to the porch after that? I put on. Now my burning warm clothes and headed upstairs to be with me. But not every day did that moment just like that happen. And like hell, I was leaving without rifling mine earlier than expected. As if it's proud to, proud to myself and other how right I was barely climbing in bed with her. Unlikely. 
my own dirty bed maze was soft, warm, and had another being in it, which took a lightning to my body heat, snuggling close to my chest. Multiple feelings rushed through me, hot as fire. The urge to get some part of her bleeding, just a little bit, to hold her in my arms, take her away now and deal with the, her problems later, to take her, to wake her up and, and bury those lovely hips of hers. Not willing just to roll off my desires, I took simply resting, letting, resting my left arm on her body and my right arm curled under me right handcuffed my cheek as expecting the touch may snuggle closer her head was now on my chest her arms fully drooped around her i leaned in and kissed her only to be able to touch the soft lips while a smile howled my eyes drifting into the window shock the sun was coming up already the clouds were breaking away and just letting the sun shine through. I carefully raised my head for forward and hearing my knife smother pull up the driveway shit 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 I slipped from her body waiting until I heard the door open. I quickly chuckled and opened the window, hoping hopping out and hung up the ledge, closing the window behind me. I hung there for a bit and dropped down to the ground, feeling hitting hitting the ground with the light was weird. Completely unpleasant. My second leg recovered and from the shock from the fall. I was running to the fence. I jumped over it. The grin was writing on my face. Exerting the luckiest or successful night yet. And then acknowledged that I could only, it could only get better.